you should be proud and excited for such an opportunity that these people and these companies can build wealth for you without you having to do that much, much work at all. Yeah, hey, the market hustle. Helping you to succeed, teaching like nobody else. Okay. Financial empowerment, giving you strategies for generational wealth. Wow. So you can start helping yourself. Wow. More money for you to be getting. Right. This is the moment for you to be winning and be living financially independent. What is up, Market Hustle community? It's great to have all of you back. It's been a little bit since we've done one of these, but we have both of our co-hosts, Pierce and Boffy. The whole gang is back together. And today we are going to be breaking down a very important concept that I, I think a lot of people misunderstand when it comes to the investing world. But before we do that, I want to just check in with both of our guests. Yeah, it's been about a little over a month since we last did a, a group podcast breaking down a specific topic. So really excited to have everyone back today. Uh, let's jump over to Pierce real quick. Uh, Pierce, how are you doing, my friend? How's everything going since we last talked back in April with the podcast? Uh it was good. I mean, April was a super eventful month for me, not in the sense of I did anything, but in the sense where I learned a lot. The The stock market kind of took a little April dump. And so I truly understood the the power of investing in that month by seeing how much money I was down. And uh, it, it's cool to stay along for the ride to, to see like, you know, by the end of April, you know, things were kind of leveling back out. Um, but other than that, I've just been pursuing with a, a little charity charity event that I've been uh, trying to do with a couple of buddies and I, and uh, that's about it, man. We're just trying to give back and uh, have fun. I love it. I love it. And just for a little bit more context, maybe for the community and the listeners, um, you've recently really started to take an active approach in investing, right? Because like, I know you've had like a portfolio more passively in the backgrounds that your dad kind of helped you with, but you're just now starting to really get actively involved and in paying attention to how the stock market works. Is, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, it's been it, it's been pretty nonchalant for me. I've been investing since I was 18 and I'm going to turn 22 next week. Okay. So I, I've seen, uh, I haven't really dealt with most of it. And so it's it's basically just, you know, been sitting on the back burner and I could just live my life, right? But I've been trying to take more initiative to be able to understand truly how to make my money work for me and mm -hmm. how money works. Because, you know, if it sits behind you, you know, you never turn around, you're never going to see anything. So you got to turn around sometimes and really look at it in the eye and say, okay, what is truly going on? Like last month, uh, as I just mentioned, was a you know, crazy month. I've never yeah. seen a portfolio down so much. But, you know, as, and I was texting with jo uh, Josh and Boffy, everybody, and I was asking them about, you know, what do I do? And it's just one of those things. There's cycles in this thing. And so it's just riding the cycles and, you know, staying in for the long run, like we always preach about. 100%. And of course, you've clearly done a lot of research in the background. You know, you, you've gone through YouTube videos. I'm sure you've read a lot of books. But until you actually experience the ebbs and flows of the stock market, you won't really truly understand, you know, what those books or YouTube videos are, are kind of talking about. Like you'll have a good idea. but I don't I don't think anything can truly prepare you for those first few roller coaster rides in the stock market. So it, it's cool to see, you know, you know, Buffy and I have both been here to kind of help guide you a little bit and and try to stay level-headed during the times when things get a little rocky because that's going to happen in the stock market, but it's really cool to kind of see you grow as an investor and continue to develop your your stock market investing skills. I appreciate it, man. I mean, the biggest thing that I, w I wish everybody would do is just just jump in. I mean, like you mentioned, you could read so many books about cooking, right? And you could say, okay, I know how to make the best cake in the world. I have the best recipe. But unless you never put those ingredients together, dude, you're never going to get a cake. Exactly that. Exactly that. Well, great to have you back, Pierce. Glad to be back. Buffy, how are you doing, my friend? Man, I am doing good. I feel relaxed, well recovered from my world tour. It's great to kind of get back to the hustle and bustle and get grinding and getting back to providing so much value, insight, enjoyment in such a difficult time that many people are trying to navigate with a lot of geopolitical tension, you know, inflation, interest rates, um, you know, uh, the job market being quite challenging and difficult, right? People having a tough time making ends meet. So it's always good to bring good energy and good spirits back in the mix of it because at the end of the day, we got to take everything with a grain of salt. So let's get it. Couldn't agree more. And how about your Poland trip? I know you recently got back uh, from the the world beautiful. tour. How was that? 
Beautiful, man. Beautiful. It was great. Uh, flew business class. Loved it all the way. I mean, I'm drinking all the champagne. <laughs> I'm eating great meals from top chefs. Full blown, incredible experience. Um, so I was in Warsaw for about two weeks. I was in Germany first, and then in Warsaw for about two weeks. Incredible culture, great people. Shout out to Poland, and by the way, um, that's a place that many people don't naturally look as a vacation destination or a place to check out. But I can promise you, it is to die for. And I've been to many countries, and it is right now definitely the top five trips that I've been on. So Warsaw was great. Um, the the people were incredible, genuine, nice, caring. The food was great. Everybody is relatively healthy. They practice a lot of the things that we speak about and the characteristics and attributes that we talk about in this podcast. So it was great to be amongst, you know, uh, like-minded folks, people that know how to balance work and life. They walk a lot. They ride a lot of bikes. And there were some really cool things. Like you're, you're able to take your pet into the mall, right, into a shop. So that was really exciting to see. Um, even the water bottles, I mean, they, they're they so resourceful. The water bottles, the caps don't come off. So when you open it, it's like hanging on the side, right? So you can just put it right back on. So I just a bunch of little, little things that was just so interesting to me. So really had a lot of fun. Learned about the history as well. So I went to the Warsaw Uprising Museum. One of the things I try to do is to constantly educate myself, not just with finance and investing, but geography-wise, history, because sometimes we need to look at how far we've come as a society and as a species and realize that, yes, we still have a long way to go, but where we're at now, much better than where things used to be. You know what I mean? There's a lot more good people mm -hmm. in this world than um, sometimes we tend to kind of see based on what is polarizing online. Yeah. So that was incredible experience. Learn about, you know, the war, the history of that, the roles, the role that the men and women play during that war. And one thing I never really kind of really um, uh, took like understood or even took notice of was livestock, right? We talk about livestock, food, milk, goat, right? You couldn't just wake up and go to the to the shop, just like, hey, I'm going grocery shopping, right? Because, I mean, so a lot of people, they actually lived underground and so goats, goat milk was one of the ways they, they took care of children because they need milk and a lot of nutritional value. So I never thought about the importance of livestock in, in such difficult times. And so I, I learned so many things there. So that was great. Checked out Old Town. I know Pierce is a, is one of is one of is a is a local Poland native, so checked out Old Town. Ate incredible meals and food. And guys, you don't have to have so much money to enjoy life. Okay, what you would buy here in the U.S. for a hundred dollars, you can buy in Poland for twenty five dollars, literally. Right, so you can have a, a five star course meal with an appetizer, main meal, two drinks, two glasses of wine, and a dessert for about twenty five to thirty dollars. So. Sometimes, you know, having fun and enjoying life is not always about, hey, I have to spend so much money. No, there are ways to go about it. If you need tips on Poland, definitely holla at me. <laughs> but as you can tell, I'm feeling really good about right now. So, yeah. Man, that all sounds, that sounds incredible. Uh, I'm really glad you enjoyed yourself, Bafi. And it sounds like it was also a, a refreshing trip on top of that. Like, I know it was a work trip technically, but you were able to still really yeah. dive into the yeah. culture yeah, and absolutely. just learn from it all. So. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. So I got the social life aspect of it. I got the nightlife. I got the cultural differences, right? I got the history and I was able to learn about the market itself because I went there for work. So it was really nice to see how fast that market is growing, how there's changes and this election year for them too, as well. You know, mm. there's a lot of a lot of other countries have election year just like us this year. So it's kind of interesting to see the dynamics and things play out. Yeah. Bafi, I'm I'm kind of curious, and this is kind of relevant to the topic of the podcast today. But uh when you were kind of around there and, and hanging around people, did the topic of like money ever come up? Like did you ever like have any did you did you ever ask any questions about just kind of how people saw it in that in, in Poland and whatnot? Like I'm just curious oh, to see if you got any pulse on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and you know, the, the topic of money comes up and and primarily surrounded taxes, right? Because in, in most a good amount of European countries, you pay a ton in taxes, but the trade off is to get all these other benefits in terms of healthcare or more affordable schooling, right? Whether it's university and so forth. So um, people don't make as much as, say, we make here in the US, right? Because we have the biggest market, we have access to the, to the most uh, advanced capital society and so that access comes with its own perks trade-offs as well but they don't make as much money but the way they live you can tell they've really gotten it down packed 
in terms of work-life balance, your ability to enjoy life, have fun at the same time, especially on the weekends. You know, they have that community aspect, a sense of belonging. There's a lot of things going on outdoors and indoors and without breaking the bank, you know. But people are relatively, you can tell they're reasonable in how they manage their financial resources, you know. They save, they invest, you know, they take care of their family, they live life, and they kind of balance it out well. I would say culturally, the what I kind of got from it was that they're a little bit more, um, I would say they consume and enjoy things more in moderation, right? Like they don't um, abuse resources or access the way we do here, right? We can run the water and just let the water keep running. Like we don't care. We turn the lights on, the light stays on, whether we're in the house or not. Over there, it's not like that. They're a little bit more conscious in that sense, yeah. Interesting stuff, interesting stuff. Well, hey, it's great to have both of you back uh, for this next podcast. I'm, I'm really excited to dive into this one. And yeah, let's let's waste no more time. Let's just jump into it. So today's podcast, we're just going to be diving into mostly the misconceptions of how people view the stock market. So assuming a, a lot of our listeners have been investing for a few years, a lot, some of them are brand new investors. Some of them have never invested yet. They're still kind of paying down debts. But no matter where you're at along your financial journey, odds are when you first heard about the stock market, whenever that was, maybe you were younger, maybe you were just entering your career, uh, maybe you didn't hear about the stock market until you were you know, in your late 30s, like whatever it was, it's very easy to kind of develop an opinion on what the stock market is just from hearing things, whether it's from friends, whether it's from family, or whether it's from the news, like whatever's happening. Um, it's very easy to just basically grasp onto a belief about the stock market without truly understanding what's going on in the stock market. So today, we're just going to dive into mostly, yeah, what, what type of misconceptions people tend to have that prevent them from being able to get the stock market to work in their favor. For me personally, I, I would say one of the common things I tend to see is people will, they'll hear like a news story, right? Like where something will be happening in the stock market, like maybe a company goes bankrupt or some fraud is discovered because some fraud situation is discovered in a company. And before they've even gotten to the level of being able to invest themselves, like maybe they're still kind of early in their financial journey, they just develop an opinion based on one story that they hear that stock market equals bad. Stock market equals don't touch it because there's just too much weird stuff going on. And this type of thought process does a lot of harm because if you listen to other podcasts, you'll quickly realize that one of the crucial parts of building wealth is investing your money. You can't save your way to wealth. Although saving, don't get me wrong, is a very important concept, it's only going to get you so far. And the way that you can level up to the next wealth level or, or financial level is by investing the money you make. So hopefully the, the whole goal of this podcast is that we can help clear up any misconceptions that maybe you have, maybe your friends have. You could tell them like, hey, I know you think the stock market's bad, but take a listen to this podcast because unfortunately, if you hold on to certain misconceptions or beliefs, the only thing that you're going to be hurting is your own financial future if it causes you to avoid the topic of investing altogether. So hopefully this podcast will help. But just to kind of jump into it, our, our first question for Pierce and Buffy and myself for the for the just to kind of kick off the podcast is why do people why do you think people think the stock market is a scam? Because if you spend any time like in friend groups or just people who are early on in their journey, it's it's inevitable that you'll hear somebody just call the stock market a scam. They'll they'll say that the stock market's rigged, that you can't make money in the stock market, that only the rich can make money in the stock market, that if you're just the average person or if you just don't come from a wealthy family that it's impossible to essentially benefit from the stock market. And this is a massive, massive misconception. So we'll throw it to Pierce or Buffy, whichever one of you want to go first. Why do you think people think the stock market is a scam? Pierce, I'm curious to hear what you think in terms of, especially with you being more like the right on the cusp of the next generation. And what, what are you seeing 
you know, based on conversations you you've had, you know, uh, what you see online or amongst your peers and stuff like that. What are you? How do you think people are looking through this lens right now? Okay, so uh, for everyone who doesn't know, I work at a local market, uh, you know, a grocery store near me, and so I deal with a lot of people relative to my age. You know, some people younger than me, some people older than me, but not by a whole lot. You know, there's probably an average age of about 25 working there, where, where at least where I work. And so money for me has always been a topic to discuss. And so um, I, I always advise people to to start investing. And I do get a lot of common things back from, you know, when I talk to people, it's like, you dude, like, hey, dude, I don't have enough money to get started in that. Like, you know, I only have like an extra 50 bucks a week. And so I'm like, that's pretty much all you need. Like the one big thing that I hear from everybody is that they think they need an absurd amount of money, like a hundred grand to start. And I'm like, no, dude, you, you really don't. You need to start with pennies, right? Like that's that's where you need to start. Um, most people my age, at least, they, you know, uh, if you're, you know, 21 like I am right now, uh, a couple years ago, there was the GameStop, the AMC stuff, and like, you know, all these, all, all these hype coins, you know, NFTs and stuff like that. So people, you know, at least for my for my generation, we're seeing a lot of other people get really wealthy really quickly. And so there's a misconception that you can make it happen overnight with the markets to which in the sense of reality, it's probably not going to happen. So, I mean, I just see a lot of, uh, you know, misconstruction online, whether it's celebrity endorsements, people endorsing, you know, a certain uh, NFT or something, and then they promote it and then they dump it. So there's quite a few things that I've seen, you know, from multiple people that I've been around. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Good points, man. I think, I think there's a, I can probably go off on a list of a good five to 10, but I'll start off with lack of understanding. I think that's really the, one of the forefront reasons why many people feel as though the stock market is a scam and, you know, it's for the rich and everything is manipulated X, Y, and Z, and they'll never, you know, get there. Right. And so, Many people perceive the stock market as being way too complex and like like this mysterious, you know, entity that's just kind of, you know, that's kind of there, but it's not there to serve them, right? And and that is that can't be further from the truth. Um, so I think lack of understanding is one. Next is volatility and risk. You know, many of us, it's quite human nature to actually be risk averse, right? Because from a from a primitive survival perspective. We're not designed to run towards danger. You know what I mean? It's like, ooh. So when we the relate, we have that same deeper connection with money. Where when we we hear volatility or risk, we assume you know danger or like the worst case scenario. But we have to understand that you know volatility is quite normal and is important to get educated on these subject matters. And then third, again, the perception of manipulation. Right? You know, many people think there's this insane agenda which of course some people have an agenda at the top to you know tweak the fabric of life and tweak outcomes to a certain extent right but at the end of the day the broad population also have access to be able to benefit from the same systems and tools that's available so that perception of manipulation tends to stop people from actually getting their fair share of the pie and then number four Pierce touched on it a bit I think media sensation you know, just the way the media is set up, right? They cover everything that's focused on negative events, market downturns, scandals, right? All these individual losses, stuff happening. And then I'll say fear. Fear is just one of those big ones too. And environment, that is a massive piece, environment, right? Like if you work in finance, business, accounting, such as myself, you know for a fact that the stock market is definitely not a scam. Not because you think, right? Not because of your own opinion, but you have a lot of tools and facts to back that up. But if somebody's not around these type of environments, which is the majority of the population, they're not getting a healthy exposure to these things. And so when you kind of mix all of that up, you can see why it's difficult. And that's why, you know, us three love doing the work that we do with this podcast, because we can help so many people bridge that gap without all the misconceptions and, and all the, the fake and the fluff, right? We give you both sides of the coin. You're going to get the good mm -hmm. and the bad. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And then, for some people, it's also personal experience, right? They might have seen something, especially during the pandemic. They might have seen something, throw their money in there, and realize that GameStop was not going to work in their favor, and they lost a ton of money, right? Or they tried trading, 
and realize that, yeah, maybe in the beginning they were making money, but now it's not hitting the same. They've actually mm -hmm. lost more money than they made. And so that leads people to moving ment ment mentality-wise. This shifts them to a state of like being crippled, right, or unable to act. And so I think those are some of the, the major pieces there why many people feel like is a scam. Great points, Bafi. Great points. You know, and I think the lack of understanding is a very important point. Like, definitely got to highlight that one because yeah. one thing about the stock market, something I've noticed, is that it could be deceiving. Where if you're looking at it for the first time, it can look a lot easier to make money and profit than it actually is in reality, right? Like. When, when you're just getting started, when you when you make the first jump into the stock market you, and you see like Microsoft or Amazon go up 10% in a, in a couple of weeks, and if that's the first thing you see, then that's the context you're entering the stock market in, where you just see a couple of companies do really well. And you're just like, oh, this game's easy. I just got to buy these companies. They've already done well in the past, so they're probably going to do well in the future. And that's all I got to do. So like, I think people kind of trick themselves into thinking they understand the stock market dynamics a lot sooner especially in the early stages. And they kind of trick themselves in a sense. And we saw a lot of this back in 2020. And we've seen a lot of this with NFTs where you know these NFTs do really well because there's just a lot of craziness going on. And people may, may get like a good win you know, early right. on in that stage. And then because they got that win, it kind of reinforces that behavior in themselves. And if they keep getting like win after win, they start to think they know it all. They're just like, I, I figured out the formula. You know, I've been investing for a month, but I've been able to get win after win after win. Yep. And then what happens is things get more dangerous where they start to take more risk. They're just like, I already know, you know, they, they start to say they're the next Warren Buffett. They go get their <laughs> credit cards. They start doing cash advances to grab money out of their credit cards and just dump it all into random stocks that they, they think they've cracked some formula to just profit tremendously. Yep. But one thing the stock market will always do is it's going to humble you if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't understand the longer term cycles or just have the context to understand how the stock market works. One important thing that every new investor needs to realize is that the stock market is constantly ebbing and flowing, right? Like there's constantly going to be moments where the majority of the market's going to be super greedy where everybody's like making money, everything's going up, everything seems great. And then there's also going to be moments where there's a lot of fear, where everybody thinks the stock market's terrible, everything's going to go to zero, everybody thinks the next great depression's right around the corner. Like these are cycles that have been repeating for centuries, <laughs> like ever since the stock market created. Like when you're just getting started and you're just starting to learn about the stock market or or starting to look at stock charts, it's easy to assume that everything is happening, like all everything what's going on is happening for the first time. But there are predictable cycles kind of going on in the stock market, like longer term cycles, where there's moments where everybody everything seems like it's going great, everything's going up. And then there's moments where things are not going so great, and things aren't so hot. Stocks are said to take the escalators up and the elevator down. And I think if you go into the stock market and, and just start investing for the first time and, and you don't understand the, the historic context of the stock market or, or how the dynamics kind of work, it's easy to kind of trick yourself into investing in something that you shouldn't be investing in, get burned, and then call it a scam and be like, this is a scam. You know, I tried to make money. And instead of blaming it on your own under, lack of understanding of the stock market, as humans, it's, it's a lot easier to blame other people for our problems than to blame ourselves for the lack of understanding and ignorance, because that takes a lot of humility, which is not always easy. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, like that, that's something I, I see time and time again, like when I'm talking to newer investors yeah, um, and even investors who have advanced past that stage, like a lot of people who have started their journey, like they've made those initial mistakes as a newbie investor, like the first couple of years. And then they graduate, they start to realize like, oh, that's not how this game works. And they start to dig, go down deeper down the rabbit hole and learn a bit more. So, yeah, guys, to your point, I think we've been spoiled. I think the the newer investor has been exposed due to COVID and, and all the, the Fed decisions and activities that has occurred over the last, you know, one to three years. And, you know, a good amount of major, a good amount of new investors started investing within the last, say, four, three years, right? Some starting this year. 
Um, the most important thing is definitely be in the game. So that's that's first step, right? So you're in the game. But we have definitely been spoiled in terms of the returns that we've seen yeah. in the last two or three years. That is something that's unrealistic. And so because of that experience, many of us are looking at investing in that scope. And we we expect these high returns to be quite normal, right? And that is the most unrealistic expectation in this game because once you kind of have your mind set in stone on that because that's what your experience has been so far it is very difficult to then challenge your beliefs and it's very difficult to then unwind that wiring right and for some people if they see their money go down significantly but then they hear oh well this such and such rich person's money's up right they, they they're doing x y and z then they start to not only question their methodology, but they start to actually give up, you know, and, and that's one thing that we definitely cannot afford. So I agree with you in terms of really understanding the market, how it works, not just because of how you've experienced it or what you've seen so far in, with your time in it, but how does mm -hmm. it really work objectively outside of your emotions, outside of your, you know, confirmation bias, outside of your own money beliefs, how does the stock market really works as a standalone entity? You know, that's a really key point. Good, 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 good point on that one. Cause too many of us have been spoiled, you know, like these NFTs, Bitcoin, yeah. everything is just going crazy. And so we think making money in the stock market is that easy. It is really not. It's a long term. Yeah. It's simple. I'll say that, but it's definitely not easy. And it takes time. Just like anything good in life takes time. Couldn't agree more. And I, one of the things I noticed like during the craziness moments of the stock market is they tend to attract a lot of newer investors. So like when Nvidia is doing really well, when, when it's in highlighted yeah. in the news, like constantly, yep. like it's, it's on CNBC constantly the hot topic, man, the hot topic when Bitcoin's like at new highs, like this is usually what attracts newer investors because yeah. people have a lack of understanding of what the stock market is their introduction to it is like maybe CNBC or CNN or whatever news media. And they just see kind of like a snippet. They're like, oh, Bitcoin is up. Like whatever's going to make the hot news of the day, Bitcoin's going up 20% in the last couple of weeks. Like that's kind of how they're introduced to the stock market or investing. And on one end, it's good because they're starting to have, they're starting to develop that curiosity of like, oh wait, I can make money from investing. Like just putting my money into an asset. Like they start to connect dots a little bit. But what happens is if you don't have the full scope of how things work, that's that's where where a lot of people get burned as as newer investors because they jump into the game. They just they hear like maybe three stocks, like they're only aware of Nvidia, Tesla, and uh, maybe maybe Meta, right? And that's all they know. It's like when when they open up their first brokerage account and they ask themselves, "What do mm -hmm. I invest in?" Well, they've only heard three stocks, and they've yeah. all been the hot stocks that are constantly being killing pressed it. on yeah. all of the media, and they're killing it, but. What happens is a lot of the times when something's like super popular in the masses, when it's doing really well, it's kind of everything, ha everything works in cycles. So like if a stock goes up a lot, like if it's going to go up like hundred percent, inevitably it's going to also have a down cycle where it's going to, it's going to correct a little bit, right? It's, it's secular. So there's going to be moments where, yeah, it might be doing really well, but a lot of people get drawn in like towards the top. And then what happens is inevitably cr like correction, like a correction or crashes and kind of self-corrects itself a little bit. And that's when they kind of jump out and they're like, oh, see, like I thought I was gonna make money, but it's a scam. So uh, unfortunately, like if you're just jumping in just based off of snippets that you hear throughout your everyday life without diving down the rabbit hole a little deeper, inevitably you're gonna get burned, right? Like if, if you don't understand just the risk that you're you're kind of entering into, especially when the things that make the news tend to be the riskiest assets. Like the the news wants the stuff, they, they want to talk about the stuff that is that captures people's attention. And that tends to be the riskiest stuff. So that's why I, we see a lot of newer investors jump into that stuff. Exactly. I mean, I totally agree. I think it's 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 the FOMO, man. It's the people, it's the fear on missing out. People want to jump in on what's doing well at the moment. And so like, you know, I don't know what NVIDIA is at right now. I think like eight or nine hundred dollars, something ridiculous. But like people I'm check it right now. Yeah, tell me <laughs> what it is, Poppy. So pe people they they want to they want to get in on, on like you know as it's going up. So like you know as the the media is covering eight eighty nine eight eighty nine. So yeah, almost yep, nine hundred okay, bucks. Okay. <laughs> so like 
pe- people will look at it as like, you know, at $850 and they say, oh, yeah, no, the prediction says this will go up to $1,200. And, you know, let's say it doesn't go to $1,200 and it drops down, you know, $400. Then people will be like, oh, this is this is all just a, this is a scam. It's a joke. You know, the human psychology is like, you know, if you have a if you just got a new car, your if your your friends just four of your friends just got a new car and you're sitting there with an older car, you're gonna say, Well, I'm I'm kind of missing out, man. Like, you know, I, I want a new car, or it could be related to anything. Like, you know, four of your friends have food and you don't have food, suddenly you get hungry, you know? And so it's the it's the fear of not being involved in something that you know, maybe good. But I think that's where people get trapped is they get the misconception that, you know, oh, I'm jumping in at a good time. But like, they don't do their research and due diligence that comes with when investing money, man, it's, yeah. you know, people related to to gambling. But you know, to me, I try to say it's an educated, calculated risk. That's what it is. Uh, for sure. And I would say that's probably one of the biggest, like highlights that I would say, to why people think the stock market is a scam. It's, they confuse risk with scam where they don't understand like risk management. So they go into it again, kind of taking this hypothetical newer investor, they, they hear about NVIDIA. And again, I'm not saying like NVIDIA is a bad stock or a good stock, but I'm just saying for somebody who never invested, maybe they have some debt and they just hear, you know, NVIDIA throughout CNBC or wherever they hear it. And they're just like, okay, well, it's going up and I want to make some money. So I have 500 bucks in my bank and they just throw it into NVIDIA without understanding risk, like what risk is, without understanding market cycles, without understanding um, just the ebbs and flows of the stock market. And maybe they go through a period, like there's a couple of weeks or even a month where it's it's in a downtrend and they 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 have a bunch of fear and they're like, screw this, investing is not for me. It's rigged because the whales pumped up the stock and now it's going down. So now I'm going to just sell everything and just screw the stock market all because they just don't understand. Like maybe, maybe the key point is they just weren't comfortable with that volatility, AKA the the moves that that asset makes, because when a big asset like is going up a lot, it's going to have more volatility. Like there's kind of ebbs and flows. It's kind of like the yin and the yang. If it goes up a lot, odds are it's also going to have cycles where it goes down a lot too. Right. You can see this in the crypto world where the volatility is absolutely nuts. <laughs> and for some people, they just can't stomach that type of volatility, right? Maybe they can't stomach the volatility of individual stocks. Yeah. And that's also why understanding risk and risk management strategies and even your own tolerance for risk is so crucial as a newer investor. Because if you just jump in and like everybody has the objective of, hey, I'm going to go in the stock market. I want to make money. Like nobody is investing not to make money. Like they're investing because they want to increase their wealth. But everybody has different tolerances for what they can withstand emotionally or just stomach, like just stomach what type of ups and downs they can stomach. And every asset is going to have a different type of volatility profile. Um, And I think without understanding that, you can end up buying the wrong stock, buying the wrong ETF maybe. That doesn't fit your, your risk profile. And then kind of get burned because yeah. something happens uh, and and you know you you panic sell. Yeah, I think there's a direct correlation between generally between one's risk tolerance versus between their risk tolerance and how much they actually know and understand the asset class that they're in. Right. So yeah. if somebody doesn't understand it, their risk tolerance is not gonna be uh, where it needs to be for them to actually get the full benefit of that asset class, right? It's like you're going to, like you said, the, the ebbs and flows, the volatility, like you're literally going to be moving based on however the asset class is moving, which actually doesn't help you at all <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, right? So back to your original point in terms of one of the biggest things that that puts people in a in the mind frame of thinking that is a scam is not understanding the stock market. So whether it's the stock market, real estate, um, you know, business, any other form of asset class, your ability to actually tolerate and weather the storm when the storms do come is how much you actually know what you're doing and how much you know about that asset class. So mm-hmm. people don't realize like your return is same thing correlated to how much you actually know. Cause if you don't know and you don't have the the temperament, right? The emotional intelligence, the ability to kind of un- let it do what it's supposed to do 
and trust that the system works and it works in your favor, you're not going to gain the most returns, right? You, you might've yeah. had 30% return last year, but guess what? It ain't looking like 30% so far this year and it can definitely go south very quickly overnight as well. And so what are you going to do when that time comes up, right? How do you know if you did it right, if you're doing it right, if you should stay, if you should leave, you won't know unless you built the proper foundation in learning and understanding how much these asset classes really operate. And that is what we're here to help everybody with. And that's what all our platforms is about. You know, we, there's so much information and it might take you just five, 10 minutes, maybe an hour just to listen to this podcast. And that will spark something in your brain to do additional research. All of that matters. Don't ignore that thought when it comes in your brain, right? Because there's a lot of times we'll be like, oh, well, we'll do it later. I'll do it when I have time. Uh, yeah. You don't have time. This is the time. So when you get the thought, don't just put it off, right? Just even if you don't have time to do it, a little research now or learn about it now or listen to the podcast or whatever it is, put it in your phone. Make a little note. Put a little something in your calendar. That five seconds or or one minute of, you know, making it a, a quote unquote like a priority or on your schedule, that can be the difference between you eventually becoming a millionaire versus you not getting there at all. Mm -hmm. Right. So don't underestimate all the little things, you know, your brain, your brain is supposed to literally search for solutions. And if it's doing that, don't let the solution just go come in and then don't let it run away. Uh, -uh. You got to trap it. You got to catch it. Right. It's like how you put your money in the market so it can cash more money for you. I, I like that you that you state that, you know, it's it's the little things. And so, you know, people think it takes a, a, a huge initial investment. But it's the little habits that you have in your life that, that that will dictate how you end up in 10, 5, 10 years from now. I mean, if you wake up every morning, brush your teeth, go to the gym, drink a cup of coffee, I mean, you know, your habits, you know, you're used to doing those things. Most likely, if you do that five days in a row, the sixth day, you're going to do that same thing. And so if you're used to not educating yourself and you're, you know, you're, you're used to not doing the the things that, you know, grow your wealth or whatever it is, you know, you're most likely going to stay on that trajectory, but it just takes one time for like people listening to this podcast. You don't have to listen to the whole thing. You know, if you can't sit down for an hour and listen to a podcast, dude, listen for, li listen to 10 minutes of it, you know, you know, l listen to 10 minutes of it. And it's these little things in your life that you do that will impact you for the rest of your life, you know, doesn't yeah, take man. a lot. And to kind of take it a step further, I would say it all really boils down to not putting your money into companies or assets that you don't deeply understand. Yeah. So like true. if you don't know how a company is making money or generating profit, or if they're even making profit at all, then you should not be given your, your hard earned money, the cash that you spend your time to make to these companies, right? Like the fact that there's a lot of people out there who they don't really do any research. Like they just, see the chart, they see it going up. They're like, sounds good to me. <laughs> and they just give their money, their hard earned money to whatever stock or investment it is. There's a lot of people doing that. And it's absolutely nuts because for me, it's easier to withstand the ebbs and flows of the stock markets when you know what you're invested in. When you understand what you're invested in, whether it's the company, like if you're investing in individual stocks, you for sure got to know what you're invested in because if they're not generating profit or if they're have if they're struggling to you know increase their revenue or maybe they're having some management issues or competition is kind of eating at their their uh, heels or whatever yep you you got to know that as an investor if you're if you're giving your money to this company because ultimately what you're really doing when you buy a stock is you're buying a small piece of the company you become part owner of the company would you buy like, think about it like this. Like if you had, let's, let's hypothetically say you have a couple hundred grand and somebody was selling a small, very, very small business for like 150 grand. Would you just be like, all right, sounds good. Here's 150 grand. You don't even know how the business works. You don't even know if it makes money. Like, no, exactly. you're going to go in and ask this person like, Hey, how are you actually making money? Like how profitable are you? Like, what do I need to do to run this business? Like you're going to, you're going to want to understand how the business works before you give them your money to buy the entire business. And the same applies to the stock market. And I, I think if you confuse the stock market for a casino rather than a place where you buy and sell shares of ownership, it's very easy to make mistakes 
where you invest in things that you don't understand um, compared to having that ownership, that company ownership mindset. Yeah. And and I think that's one of the common themes that everybody that's listening to this podcast is going gravi- to gravitate towards, or at least we're going to beat it into their head that, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the education piece is really the number one um, priority, right? And that the fact, and you yourself is really the number one asset, right? So the more you're able to kind of invest in your development, in your education, the better you're going to do in the stock market. And I know we touched on a lot of the reasons why, you know, um, many feel as though the stock market is a scam, but, you know, so somebody can be like, okay, well, all right, cool. You're saying it's not a scam, right? What are some of the indications or some of the things that's happening that everybody can easily kind of verify or get, get a good pulse and sense of like, okay, you know, it's actually real and it's not a scam. Like what are some of the, like a few things that you would say to somebody who, who needs that extra like confirmation, you know? Don't, for me, I mean, it would be, don't try to time it. I mean, this is one thing that I love that Josh promotes on his page is time in the market is greater than timing the market. You know, you'll, if you sit back on the sidelines and you always wait for the right time to buy the stock, eventually you're never going to buy the stock because when is the right time? And so it's kind of just jumping in. I mean, it's, you know, you have to do your research, as you guys both stated, you have to do do due diligence and educate yourself on these things. But it's just being able to balance, balance how much you're willing to risk, you know, don't risk it all, obviously, never put all your eggs in the same basket. But you know, just balance it and try your best. I mean, you know, you're going to end up losing eventually. And that's the reality of it. But it's also better if you just stay in it for the long run. Yeah. I mean, first off, if you're, ent- I think a lot of it's just kind of auditing yourself and like why you're interested in investing in something to begin with. Because if you're entering it into trying to make some quick money, like trying to, trying to turn something into like a quick profit, then inevitably you're going in there at a disadvantage. Like you're entering the market in a disadvantage because. In the short term, the stock market is a lot more uncertain. It's a lot more unpredictable and volatile compared to once you study the the history of, of stock market investing, I feel like it's it's easier to understand that humans as a collective species are really great at growing the economic wealth over long periods of time. Like over short periods of time, there's a lot of choppiness to it. There's a lot of ups and downs. To me, that's just life, right? Like we can all relate to that in just life, our day to day life in general. And you know, but as as a, as a collective species, like humans are capable of a lot of amazing stuff, and we've been able to grow massive amounts of wealth for just everybody in general. And let alone to to I think one of the most important points is the stock market is one of the biggest wealth creators in the world. It's one of the biggest asset classes that creates the most wealth, that generates the most wealth for people around the world. So like understanding that is, is an important point. But ultimately, um, just to kind of dive in a little deeper to that, Buffy, I would say on the company standpoint, if, <laughs> if the company's not generating a profit, and, and let, me, let me highlight something, revenue and profit, those, those are two different things. So first off, if you don't understand the difference between revenue or profit, just stick with index funds, like stay away from individual companies. But if a company is not generating profit, that heightens the amount of risk that you're that you're taking on. And it really kind of just adds an extra layer of this is kind of a sketchy company. Like on one end, a lot of like early companies, like they're they're not profitable right away. So like it, it's like startups, like they take time to to get to that profitable stage. But as an investor, as somebody who your main goal is to make your money, to give companies your money to, to generate more money, if you don't deeply understand the company from the standpoint of how they make money, let alone if they if they don't actually make profits, that should immediately have some red flags that go up in your head. And, and you gotta ask, you gotta dive deeper to that. Like the first question is why aren't they profitable? <laughs> right? Go down that rabbit hole. And then the second question is how long will it take them to be profitable? How how long do we expect? For them to actually become profitable because if a company isn't actually generating profit 
they're not going to be able to generate value for investors in, in the form of being able to reinvest in their company, in the form of being able to provide a dividend, in the form of being able to purchase back their stocks, because they're going to need profit to do that. They could use debt, but debt's only going to get them so far. Like That's a very short-term thing. So from a long-term standpoint, I, I think it's really just kind of auditing how the company is, is maneuvering. If they're making a lot of short-term decisions, like taking on debt to finance shock, stock buybacks or dividends and stuff like that, then like that's just not sustainable long-term. So like th those are some red flags right out the gates. But a, a lot of it to me is it's it's just understanding like the 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 five, 10 year vision of the company itself. Like what what are they what are they aiming to accomplish? And then what is what's their track record? Like what have they actually done to kind of give their words value? Right. Um that that's that's how I would break down trying to separate the mm -hmm bad companies from the good companies. And of course, there's always going to be risk. Like you, you could do all the research in the world. Like there's always risk no matter what you're investing in. And that's yeah. also what makes individual stocks so hard, individual stock picking so hard. And it's also why diversification is so important because there's always a risk. Like even if you invest in the best company in the world, whether that's like what, it, even if you invest in Apple, Amazon, NVIDIA right now, there's always a slim chance that something could happen some news story could break out that, hey, Amazon was actually screwing up their financial statements and they were doing some, you know, magic, accountant magic in the background <laughs> and, and investors wake up to that fact. And then the whole stock just kind of plummets and the company just blows up. Like that's actually happened in the past. A company called Enron. They were one of the best, biggest companies in the world. They were, they were known as the biggest company. Um, they got so that, that's, cooked. They got cooked. And it's always a risk. So it's really just understanding, first mm -hmm. off, uh, you know, kind of circling back to like my, my original point, it's just like understanding what you're investing in, yeah. understanding your risk tolerance, having those risk management skills to diversify your portfolio. And it's, you know, all this, I know, I know it's a lot, especially as a new investor listening to this, like hearing all this, it's also why we're a big fan of index funds because yeah. you could just own 500 of the best companies, 500 of the most profitable companies. You own all of those. If one of those or two of those go bankrupt or start to underperform, the index boots them out, replaces them with a better company, all without you having to do a thing. Like to me, absolutely. That's that's the stock market working for you, and I yeah. like that. <laughs> Great points, man. I think I, I, what I'll add is, you know, just a few statistics to begin with, and for people that may have a very difficult time conceptualizing just how real and how possible it is to become a millionaire, right? Even though it was, you might feel like, oh my gosh, it's a million years away. I'm so far off. I don't have much invested. I have all these bills, these debt. He, let, hear these out and then just kind of, you know, come to your own conclusion as well, right? Because part of the, the life journey is being able to get information and, and decide for yourself, you know, what's, what's more applicable and what's going to work for you versus what you might not um, really benefit from. But the first statistic is that the wealthiest 10% own 93% of the stocks. Okay. And so you have to look at it this way. If you want to become wealthy financially and you want to do well, you have to follow a blueprint. And the blueprint is to do what wealthy folks are doing. If I want to play in an NBA, I am not studying and learning from a mechanic. I am looking at Michael Jordan videos, LeBron James videos, Kobe Bryant's video, RIP to Black Mamba, one of the greatest of all time. I'm studying their tape, their fundamentals, their mentality, right? Their behavior. How are they really, you know, tapping into that skill that's required to be an elite player in the NBA? And so we have to kind of transition and do the same thing when it comes to our investment journey and building wealth. If the wealthiest 10% own 93% of the stocks, why do you think they own 93% of the stocks, right? If it is not real, if it doesn't actually have value, if it doesn't produce anything for them, why would they put their money in there, right? So that's one thing to just ponder over. Bafi. Josh, you look like you had a comment. <laughs> well, I want to play that out a little bit more because I can just hear yeah. the comments in the background of being nice. like, well, that's exactly why the stock market's rigged because they own all the stocks. Yeah, exactly, right, yeah. <laughs> my, my response to that would be, uh, okay, let's, let's, let's hypothetically say that it is rigged and they own all the stocks. Do you think they're going to let their wealth go down to zero? Yo, facts, right. True. Yeah. So- mm -mm. Wouldn't you better off just go buy the stocks that they're buying too? You know, yeah. right? It's one of those things where it's like, if all right, if you can't beat them, you might as well join them. <laughs> right? 
you know so that's that's what good point there man good rebuttal and then um keep in mind that you know if you have a job and you're paying into a pension or 401k anything of that nature guess what your 401k is invested in equities aka the stock market right so even the money that you're going to end up retiring on is inside the stock market and the reason why it's invested in the stock market is because that is where that money that you're contributing every two weeks or every week on your pay period, that is where it's going to grow the most due to compound interest. That's why the little bit of money turns into a million and you can live on it for many years and decades to come, right? So keep that in mind. And also a study by Spectrum Group found that around 77% of millionaires in the United States alone own stocks or stock-based investments. Right. That's a big percentage. This is not like eh, maybe some. This is most 77 percent have a pretty healthy exposure to the stock market. OK, so that's just a three few three little statistics that you can kind of really check on. If you want to fact check it, be sure to do so. You can go online, do some research as well. And you're probably going to find a ton more statistics that kind of verifies and have a similar theme there, you know, Um and, and I would say it, it is important to develop a healthy relationship in trusting um, the system in a way that it can benefit you, right? And one of the things that you many people may not know is that there's regulatory oversight, right? These companies and the stock market doesn't just do whatever it wants willy-nilly, right? There's, there is governance, there's repercussions, and there's consequences for bad behavior or manipulation and lies, right? And so that's what the SEC really does. That's the Securities and Exchange Commission. And their job is to oversee, you know, the business regulations, the accounting, the financial reporting, all the details that's associated with these companies that are in the stock market, right? So this you can have some confidence knowing that, hey, everybody's not just a free for all, you know, there's some governance over it. And that is not influenced by, you know, any political affiliation or, any individual stock or company that has the most power, no, they function as an independent entity, you know, so keep that in mind. And another thing is really just the historical performance. Let's be honest. We, we Now, these days, we all have internet, so we can see what has happened over the years and the repercussions of not investing, right? Now, whether we believe in the stock market or not, one thing is true. If we invest, we're going to do better. If we don't invest, we're going to do worse and it's compounded, okay? So we have two options here. We can choose, hey, let's look at the historical performance, see how much wealth has been built, what we've missed out on already. And I know, I don't know about you, and I, I do know about you because if you're listening to this podcast, you definitely don't want to miss out on shit no more. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So do your best to take good advantage. And Josh said access to ownership, you know? that That is one of those things that I think sometimes we forget, like, it gets lost on us sometimes, but keep in mind, there was the time that many of us didn't even have access to be in this country. Think about that, right? Like we didn't even have the opportunity to step foot on this soil, right? Now we're not, now we're not only stepping foot on the soil, we have access to the most, the strongest economic machine, the strongest capital society, the strongest and most diverse population on the damn planet. I mean, that is such a gem that is very unique to us. And we forget how valuable that is. You know, we, we start to see all the differences and all the gaps and all the, all the, you know, problems. And we forget like, yo, we really have a, an incredible opportunity here and access to ownership. We, we can't, we're not only just here, we can go to school, we can learn from each other, from these podcasts, from online. I mean, we can be part owners of these companies that basically run everything that we all depend on. You can be part owner, owner of that. Like you should be proud and excited for such an opportunity that these people and these companies can build wealth for you without you having to do that much, much work at all, right? So really take that, access serious and take that opportunity serious and take that ownership serious because I can promise you there are a gazillion people that wish they even had the opportunity to have an economic machine as such to even put some money to work yeah. right and, or have the, the opportunity to even step foot on U.S. soil as we speak right and, and they 
they will do anything to just scratch the, fur the surface of what we're already sinking deep in right now. So do not take it for granted. Not everything is going to be perfect. Not everything is great. It's just life. It's human nature. Things happen. Mm -hmm. But I can promise you, you have an opportunity here that almost nowhere else on the planet has. So you better maximize this shit, man. And I'm I'm not even talking. This is not even a podcast talk no more. This is just <laughs> real life shit. Because I come from Ghana, West Africa, and I can promise you there are a gazillion people that wish they can be. Like, I'm already living millions and mil billions of people's dream on the planet. And those billions of people are not even thinking about investing. They're just thinking about physically being here, having mm -hmm. access to jobs, having access to opportunity, having access to good universities, to good trade jobs, to be able to connect, to be able to, yo, to be able to go to the hospital and get looked after, right? They're not even thinking, hey, that's the investing is not even the number one thing on their list. Like their their basic need is really the essential thing for them. They can't even get that in, in wherever they're at. And so what we have here, we cannot take it for granted, right? Mm -hmm. What 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 is this a saying? Something like I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it has to do with like when you have privilege or access, and you're kind of blind to it, or you don't value it as much as you should. Absolutely. But I'm telling you, everybody, I encourage you to take a step back periodically and just reflect on your life and reflect on what you have here and what you can do. Do not sleep on that. It is so important because you will see so many people come from different countries and they come here and they are laser focused. I mean, they can't fuck around. They can't afford to fail. Their whole future, their, their, their family's future depends on them, literally. You know, that's, that's the type of uh, tenacity and energy and like electricity we should have you know, not not be like crackheads or like don't go crazy. <laughs> but like, you, know, you should be excited. You know, sometimes it's hard. I get it, right? Day to day grind, wear and tear, it gets rough. But what we have, do not sleep on that because you know when when you when you pray for blessings, these are uh, some of the blessings that come along. And the harvest saying, God is not stupid. You know, give you some of these opportunities and tools, but what you do with it, He's just gonna wait and see if you're gonna take advantage. So. Make sure, make sure you're doing the damn thing. All right. It is real. Don't sleep. Man. Well said. That powerful stuff right there, Bobby. <laughs> that, that was, and that's well needed. I, I think a lot of people, if they truly take in those words, they'll they'll understand. They'll just have the perspective of understanding what's available to them. Because the fact of the matter is, it's never been easier to build wealth. Of yeah. course, of course, there's a lot of problems. There's, you know, things that are not fair. There's there's a lot of issues going on. But at the same time, it's never been easier to get started. We can literally buy part ownership, partial ownership in the biggest companies in the world that are generating massive amounts of value, massive amounts of profits. And you could become part owner of them right on your iPhone. Just at a click of a button, you yeah. know, turn off the Netflix for a second open up the stock brokerage account, it's right there. Like you can literally become part owner in these companies, these massive companies right on your phone. You know, that that wasn't available like 20 to 30 years ago. Like this is, a, this is a new era of being able to build ownership in, in, your, own, in your own life, right? Like be able to actually have a, have a seat at the table, you know, build your own seat at the table of these, these massive companies by buying in ownership. And the one thing I'll also say, like, I, I think, a lot of people, if you, if you don't understand just the business environment in general, it's also, you know, that, that there's a lot of misconceptions around business in general. That, that's probably a whole other podcast. But at the same time, I do feel like almost everybody in society can agree that businesses make a lot of money and that businesses, you know, whether you think it's good or bad, they make a lot of profit. And if that's the case, buying stocks is what allows you to own those businesses. So by that nature, how are you going to say that these businesses make a lot of money and they make a lot of profit, but that it's a scam? You know, like it, you're, you're, it's, it's competing beliefs in, in my, in my opinion. And I do, I do want to be fair. Like, of course, there is a lot of sketchy stuff that does oh, yeah. take place in the stock market. Like, it's not all roses and you know sunshine. Like, of course, there's the the way I see it is like anytime there's a bunch of humans involved, there's always going to be sketchy shit happening. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether it's the the stock market. It doesn't matter whether it's your school, doesn't matter whether yeah. it's your workplace, <laughs> like anytime there's a massive group of humans, there's going to be some sketchy shit going on. 
And of course that occurs in the stock market. Like I'm not saying the stock market doesn't have its, its uh, problems. Like there are Ponzi schemes of companies. There are pump and dumps. There are, there is cases of insider trading. Like these are real things that, that occur in reality, but at the same time, that doesn't take place of the entire stock market. Like you can't just say that the entire stock market is a scam because there are instances of that, right? Like there's also a lot of wealth that's generated in the stock market. There's also a lot of great businesses that return lots of value to investors. And the only way you'll understand that is by diving deeper down the rabbit hole of, you know, doing research, understanding the stock market dynamics. Um, the more you understand the different types of companies or just, or how companies generate profit, the better you'll get at identifying companies that are good compared to the companies that are bad. Because again, kind of what we touched on earlier in the podcast, a lot of people only get interested in the stock market when they hear something from their friend, like, hey, this stock's going up 100% in two days, three days. Like they hear these crazy gains, like, oh, it's earning me like 100% every week. And unfortunately, they think that's sustainable. But like anytime something sees a massive amount of growth, like that growth can only go on for so long before it has some sort of correction, right? Or maybe there is some sketchy stuff happening in that stock, but it's attracting newer investors because they're attracted to shiny objects which is like the shiny object syndrome, right? The fear of missing out, where you see something that's looking really good because it's making a lot of profit. You start making the calculations in your head. If I put 10,000, if even worse, I put my rent payments, only $3,000. I'm going to put that into this stock. If at hundred <laughs> percent over the next week, I'll be able to double my, you know, I'll be able to have, pay my rent and still have $3,000 left over. Like this is the stuff people think through. Yeah. But again, the stock market's always going to humble you if you're going into with that mindset of get rich quick that short-term thinking always gets punished in the stock market. And ironically, a lot of the sketchy stuff that happens takes advantage of that short-term thinking. They're, they're taking advantage of the short-term human behavior where people are trying to get rich quick. And that's where we see the Ponzi schemes or the pump and dumps. It's, it's these, these stocks, these companies that have sketchy leadership, or there's just sketchy stuff going around in Wall Street, and they're taking advantage of short-term thinking. So the best thing you can do to avoid falling in trap into that stuff is to become a long-term investor. All the stuff we talk about, right? That's how you stay away from all of the garbage that's out there because I'll be frank, there is a lot of garbage companies out there, but there's right. also a lot of great investment opportunities um, to invest in, to build wealth, long-term wealth for yourself and your family. I, I totally agree, dude. Um, you know, this, this podcast is about, you know, asset ownership. And I, I want everyone to understand the the greatest asset that you have right now is not what you have in your portfolio. It's what you have in your head. And so the more education that you can get on your side, whether, you know, it doesn't matter if you want to invest in the stock market or not, but this, this particular topic is the stock market. So if you want to become the best version of yourself in the stock market, you're going to have to educate yourself. And because you're, you're dictated by how much you know. You know, you're dictated by how much you can grow, by how much knowledge you have. And so if you continually learn and continually push yourself to become a better investor and, you know, have a good risk tolerance and have a good understanding, because I think that's one topic that we all can agree on. And especially in this episode is, you know, people have a lack of understanding when they're getting into the stock market. So if you come in and you educate yourself before you, you know, dip your toes in, You'll have a better feeling of what you're investing in. Like Josh and Bobby said, if you guys did, if they did analysis on a company and you check their, you know, the revenue, the profits, et cetera, et cetera, you'll have a better understanding and you'll have, you know, not as much, you know, you know, someone pulling on your heartstrings when you go down because you'll be like, okay, cool. I understand this company is going to do well in the long term. Do you guys want to let everyone to know that, you know, you are your greatest asset, not what you have in your accounts or you know, what your portfolio says, or it's you. Yep. Perfectly said, perfectly said, you know, and I think to Josh's point as well, um, it, everything is, is a tool, you know, is a tool and, and wherever there are tools, people unfortunately have agendas. That's, that's very much real. Right. And so some people will use the tool to help assist and improve lives. And some will use the tool maybe more in a selfish, greedy manner. And so keep that perspective in mind and, you know, do the, do your best to take advantage of it and understand that, you know, the, the money that's in your bank account is not who you are. It's not your value. It doesn't dictate your life value and, and, and what you're here for. Okay. 
Um, understand that also whether you have a little money in your bank account or in your investment investment portfolio or a lot of money in your investment portfolio. Again, it does not make you no bigger and no better than anybody else, right? We are all on this life journey together. And the ultimate purpose as to why we're all here is simply to advance life. That's it. <laughs> like That's literally it, the continuation of life, right? And part of doing that is to make sure that you are investing and developing and passing down not just the money, but good healthy habits such as working out, such as good communication skills, continuous learning, and traveling the world as well, and listening to this podcast because this is going to be huge on your journey. So, yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, we'll just do one more question to kind of wrap up this podcast. I feel like we covered quite a bit, and hopefully we helped everybody listening to this just understand the nuances of the stock market, right? For me to say that the stock market in general is a scam, that's a huge misconception. Of course, there's going to be cases that are sketchy, like there's going to be sketchy stuff occurring in the stock market, but that doesn't mean that the entire thing is a scam. Just because one company or a few companies have bad leadership or make some questionable moves doesn't mean you should write off the entire stock market in general because as I said a little bit earlier, the stock market is the biggest wealth creator in the world. So by just writing everything off and not taking the time to learn how you can actually take advantage of the stock market and build long-term wealth in the stock market, you're essentially going to be kind of crippling yourself financially for building wealth for your for yourself and for your future family, whether that's the kids that you have or even your kids' kids, like if you want to start building generational wealth. All that being said, the most important thing is the society, you know, society in general, like in order to stop having to sell your time for money, which is what you're doing when you work, when you clock into work, you're providing services to your employer for in exchange for money. But in order to stop that, you have to own assets. You have to own something that pays you to own it. And the stock market is one of the easiest ways to actually start taking advantage of owning assets and becoming an asset owner in general. Of course, there's other assets like real estate, um, even just starting your own business in general. But businesses are business ownership is one of the key well key routes to building wealth for yourself and your future. But to kind of wrap up this podcast, I'd like to ask you all, uh, Pierce, Buffy, and I'll also touch on a little bit how what can somebody do to improve their financial literacy and just understanding of the stock markets uh, among the general public. So, like, let's say. They, somebody has a friend that's listening to this and they have some questionable thoughts of the stock markets. What can that person do to better their understanding of the stock markets um, in, in an easier way rather than just telling them to read mm -hmm. an entire book? Yeah. What, what would you tell them? <laughs> Honestly, I think the best and easiest, most palatable way that you know somebody who's brand new needs a little bit more you know um, uplifting in this space, and this may sound crazy, but it is actually not crazy is to listen to this podcast. And the reason why I say that is because we are on episode number what? 20, 21, 22, 20, 22. Like, right. Wow. We're on episode number 22. And in each episode, we touch on different areas that's so important for your development in this space, but in a way that you can connect to and relate to. Why? Because we're not talking to you or talking at you. We're walking the journey with you. We're speaking on our experiences and we're just like every other, every, you, we're just like, if you see a random person on the street, they look like us. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's no difference. And so because we're so in tune and in touch with reality, and we, we've been doing this for quite a long time, and we figured out a really healthy way of delivering the information, helping people learn. I think this is one of the best and easiest way to really catch up and get caught up to speed without all the confusion and all the extra social media stuff and having to do all the work yourself. We've done the work for you. All you have to do is just spend a few hours with us periodically and you'll be surprised how far you're going to get and how much you're going to catch up and actually be ahead of many people that might have spent, say, more time reading books, more time taking on courses. And of course, all those things are important vehicles, right? But what you're gaining in this 22 episodes plus more to come is really like a condensed nice clean way of not having to learn everything on your own for years right this yep. is a shortcut this is a cheat code so take full advantage i love it i love it couldn't agree more 
Um, ultimately, I, I will just kind of add before we jump into Pierce. It's important to realize that there's a business behind every single stock on the stock markets. And odds are, most people, I would say, work for some sort of public company. And even if it's not public, like even if they're not trading on the stock markets, odds are there's still like people who own it privately. But either way, whatever company you're currently work, working for, like take a look at that company. They're paying you in exchange for your work to provide value. Like I'm, I'm assuming everybody listens to this, like whatever work you do, you're you're doing some hard work. You're, you're providing value. You're doing some sort of service. You're helping out in some way in exchange for money. You're getting paid from the company. At the same time, the company you're working for is getting paid for the services you're providing. And that's that's business in a nutshell, right? Like that's that's how they're making profit is, is from the services everybody's providing. So to understand that the stock market is real, I would say just take a look at the company you're working for, the business you're working for. And it's even better if they're publicly traded. You can if you if you don't know if they're publicly traded, you could just Google, Google your company and Google stock or stock market. It'll tell you if it's publicly traded. But then you can ask yourself, is my company a scam? <laughs> you know, is the company I'm working for a scam? Like, are we actually doing work? Like, are we providing value? And I think that's going to help you kind of connect the dots and just see it more in a tangible way. Every day you're kind of working, you're like, oh, okay. Like, I can have, I can see the dynamics at play. Like, we're providing value. Like, all the hard work I'm doing is that. That's kind of what I'm getting paid for. But at the same time, like, why is this business doing it? It's because, of course, it's trying to grow the the wealth of the company. Like, that's that's kind of the stock market in general. But you can kind of see it there, where like these stock prices aren't just going up for the hell of it. You know, in the short term, yes, the short term, there's there's a lot of ups and downs, and it's the, the short term stock movements aren't always correlated to how the business is performing. But if you work for a solid company and you've been working there for maybe 10, 15 years, you can kind of feel the growth of the company, right? Like while you're in the trenches at the company, like you feel the growth. And anytime the company is doing well on the ground level, the stock price is, is going to eventually reflect that as well. So I think that's a good tangible way to try to understand the abstract of the stock market. Because it's, it's, it's very easy to kind of get lost in like how all this is kind of correlated. But if you just look in your everyday life of like the businesses you work at, or even more, like taking it a step further, the businesses that you shop at, all the companies you buy stuff from. Like if you're shopping on Amazon, buying your dog, like a new collar or whatever, like you're giving them money in exchange for that product. And that's making Amazon richer, right? It's like that, that's a that's a real tangible view of how the stock market's kind of at play. Um, and the the more value that businesses provide the world, the bigger they're gonna grow. And the bigger they grow, the more their stock price grows over the long term. Like, and of course. I, I would say that the core theme of this episode that I hope many of you take away is that the short term, like any any time you're entering this game, the stock market game with a short term mindset, you're leaving yourself vulnerable because it's it's super uncertain in the short term. Like the, the stock market is super volatile, ups and downs in the short term. But in order for a business to survive and thrive, it has to put a score on the, on the scoreboard, right? Over the long term, like it has to do well. It has to it has to perform some sort of service that people find value in order for the stock price to grow. Because companies that try to maneuver around or or try to take shortcuts or do some sketchy stuff, like if the leadership tries to do some sketchy moves to quickly boost its stock price up in the short term, they're going to get punished for that over the long term. Start entering this game with a long term mindset. Like think in ten year terms not 10 day terms, because that's where the real wealth is generated in the stock market. Pierce, how about you, my friend? What, what would you uh, tell somebody who is struggling to understand the stock market? Like I, like I said, you know, a little bit ago, dude, education. I mean, people really lack the understanding, you know, you, you want nice things in life. You want to be able to be financially free you know, but if I gave you a million dollars right now, you'd probably just do what you do with your money right now. You know, you have to educate yourself on topics that you want to become good at. If you want to become the best skateboarder, you better be start, you know, you better start hanging around skateboarders, right? So if you want to become a better investor, you better, you know, start hanging around or watching videos or, you know, list like Boffy said, listening to podcasts like this. And, you know, we're, we're one of the different type of podcasts because I personally love listening to podcasts and we have that niche of beginner investor, you know? And so for everybody who's listening, this is like a perfect introduction because 
you have Josh's experience in the stock market, which is almost 10 years, if I'm not mistaken, you know, Buffy's experience in the stock market, which is 10 years, if I'm not, you know, if I'm not mistaken. So just right there, you have 20 years of experience and in, in two people. And so they're giving you, you know, this information for free. So it's just taking the initiative and throwing yourself out there to be open to learning. So my, my biggest thing is learn as much as you can. Cause that's what I'm doing here. I mean, for everybody who does not understand, <laughs> I'm sitting here on this computer when Josh and Buffy are talking, and I'm just sitting here and I'm trying to absorb everything that I can. And, and that's really what is going to set you ahead on a better path towards just in life and also when it comes to investing in general. Uh, because Buffy and I, like, we're both also continually reading different books, yeah. watching, like, I'm always on YouTube. Like, I, I love listening to like Warren Buffett's speeches. Like there, there's so many different ways and, and different things to learn. And the only way to improve your understanding of, of how the stock market world works or just in money in general is to be a lifelong learner, right? To continue to learn this stuff. Because the more you learn, the easier it's going to get to maneuver through this financial world. And also just set yourself up on a path where you no longer have to worry about money as much because yeah. that was a big inspiration for me. Like when I was younger, like I just didn't want to struggle with money. Like I, I struggled as a kid and I saw my parents struggle with money and I did not want that to be the same case for me. And it required me to educate myself. Like I, I had to go down the rabbit holes of reading different books, of listening to different YouTube videos. Uh, you know, I went to college. Like I just did everything I could to empower myself to have the information in to actually understand what the hell's going on, right? Because if you if you don't understand what's going on, it's gonna it, it's easy just to say that it's all a scam or there's nothing there, and you're just gonna ignore the opportunities that are available at your fingertip, and that it is what it is if you go that route. Absolutely, but at this, yeah. yeah, at the same way, like it, it, it's never been easier to learn. There, there are so many different resources out there, and the minute the minute you start thinking that you know it all, that that you have it all figured out. That's the minute you fall off. So mm -hmm. even myself, like I'm constantly learning new things about the stock market, about investing. And like, I've been doing it for over a decade. Like there, there's always different things to learn. There's different yeah. companies to learn about. There's just different aspects to investing, like different investment styles. Like there's just so much to learn. So like the minute you stop learning is the minute everything tends to go downhill. Yep. And I think the beautiful thing is initially it might be difficult. You might not have like, you know, the best clear cut direction of how to go about it fully. And that's th this podcast definitely helps you have the right guardrails and getting started. Right. Mm -hmm. But over the years, it actually becomes so much easier and a lot more simpler because let's say you've been, you know, working on yourself and learning these things over the course of say four or five years, right. In year six, you already have a good idea of how you want to move and learn and what you want to touch upon intentionally, right. You're no longer, just looking at just everything and trying to figure it all out. You already done figured out most of it, especially the most important pieces already out of the way. And so now it's about, okay, what other higher level insight can I really derive and obtain and learn, right? Now you might be looking at not just the stock market. Now you might be thinking about, okay, what is the economy actually doing and how does that impact the stock market? And wait a minute, how will that affect my investment strategy currently, right? Maybe you have a family, maybe you have kids, right? You, you got to go to your kid's uh, recital or their baseball game or soccer game. You may not have as much time to be super plugged in. And so now with that five years of stock market experience, stock market knowledge, investing knowledge, and then your real life responsibilities, you might not have as much time. So now you can strategize and be like, okay, maybe I used to enjoy looking at individual stocks more, following the news and seeing what's happening in the economy, but I don't have that much time. So the best strategy for the biggest bank for my buck, both in money and time, maybe let me just buy myself index funds, park park over there, keep feeding that so that I can also enjoy the quality family time and these experiences because you don't want to focus so much on the money and the investing that you forget to live and the time is passing by and you miss out on enjoying life with the people that you care the most about, you know? So oh, yeah. that's why it's important to start early and get these things going so then you can fine tune it, be more intentional and live purposefully so yeah I'll, I'll drop it on i'll drop the <laughs> mic on that note <laughs> i love it bad and buffy we got to do a podcast episode on that alone just because i yeah, do feel seriously. like 
there there is a lot of that going on where people yeah. tend to get too involved with the stock market where they're just like watching every single thing going on it's just like yeah. Like, That's what's the point interest. of investing if you make the stock market your new job? You know, I, yeah. I guess if you like it, but at the same time, for me, like, I want to make the stock market work for me. I want to put my money in the stock market, let mm -hmm. it make me more money, and go do yeah. my thing. Go enjoy That's my life. Go. go do what I want to do, go. you know? I so, agree. Yeah. That, that's a, that's an interesting topic. We do definitely have to dive into that because a lot of people yeah. struggle with it, right? It's like anything. It's human nature. When you first start something, you go full throttle. You go crazy. Yeah. You, know, you, you go to the to the deep end, and then you got to swing back like a pendulum, right? And then yeah. eventually find the the balance. But if we can help you find the balance a little bit more efficiently, without wasting too much time, too much money, too much resources, and missing out on important things, then that's a beautiful thing too. It's kind of an art. You know, you, you kind of have to find that that rhythm that works for you in your life. And uh, ultimately, that's that's what this podcast is here to do is to to help you kind of find that rhythm in your life. And we'll definitely dig into that deeper in a, in a future podcast. I think that'd be a good topic. But uh, all that being said, podcast 22, I think we covered this topic really well. Hopefully we helped people understand more of the different dynamics that are going on in the stock market and how it's easy to just assume that you think you kind of know it all, but there, you know, there, there's a, I encourage everybody to dive deeper than if you hear somebody just call the stock market a scam. Cause it's, it's easy just to clash onto that belief of like, Oh, my friend told me it's a scam. So I'm just going to assume it's a scam because he's a trustworthy person. But one of the biggest mistakes or the, the biggest things that prevent people from building wealth is ignorance. And I, I feel like we chopped on it pretty good in this podcast of education, financial education, learning how the stock market works. That's the way out. Because once you understand just the different avenues of, of how the stock market works, of the, the cycles, it's going to be easier to, to know, not just believe that the stock market is not a scam. So great podcast. Thank you so much, Boffy and Pierce, for coming on for another amazing episode. And again, we have now we have 22 episodes. This is going to be published. So go back and listen to them all. You know, there, there's there's so much education out there in just this podcast alone. We've talked to so many different guests from different backgrounds. So go listen to them. And we're going to continue to bring on different guests, cover different topics, and go over things that will help you become a better investor and enjoy life on your own terms. Well, that's a wrap for episode 22. Thank you so much for listening. And we will see you back next week for another episode. Bye-bye. If you feel just like I do, link up, come and join this crew. Hey, I'ma go invest and I'ma watch my money double, take it to another level with that market hustle. Hey, always play it smart, you ain't dealing with a sucker. Take it to another level with that market hustle. I'ma hustle, hey, hustle with that market hustle. I'ma hustle, hey, hustle with that market hustle. I'ma hustle, hustle with that market hustle. I'ma hustle. Hustle with that market hustle, go!